is a basic beginner's tutorial on how to use Hatch. Now when you open up Hatch, it may open up to the screen which shows some of the designs that are already in Hatch, some that you may have already created. We are going to create a new Hatch digitizing design. So we're going to go up here to the top and click on new blank design. So we'll open that up and then your grid is here for your design. Now you can begin to digitize just from here from a blank screen if you already know what you wish to do. For instance, let's say you want to do um, a circle for whatever reason. You would click on circle oval and then up here do you want to fill the in circle or do you want an outline of a circle? It's entirely up to you so we'll go ahead and do a fill circle and we'll find a space here on the desktop and what we'll do is click there hold it down and drag it open to a circle and you can let go and what that will do is allow you to continue to resize click one time and you're done and you'll see that it does a, a line in the middle it allows you to stretch it out to an oval if you like or if you want it to continue to be a circle this this gives you free reign to do however you wish to do with that then you hit enter and it turns into a field oval now if you don't want it to be an oval if you want it to be a perfect circle then what you would do is you would click pull it out click one time and at this point I just go ahead and hit enter without touching anything else without moving the mouse and it turns into a perfect circle same principle if you want it to be an outline of a circle or an outline of a square you will go to outline and as you see your object properties open up over here once you switch whether it's going to be fill or whether it's going to be an outline so I'm going to pick a square and I want it to be just a regular single stitch all the way around a square. Click where you want your square to begin and as you see it draws, starts to draw a box. Once you get that box to the size that you want, click again to stop it and there you have a square that is just a single stitch all the way around. So that's how you can make basic shapes and go ahead and start to create things in Wilcom Hatch. Now let's go up here to select up here at the top and it's going to select the last thing we were working with which is the square. So say for instance I don't want it to be a running stitch I want it to be a little bit thicker um, around the border so I would hit triple run and as you see it makes it even darker because that's three stitches back and forth all the way around the circle. If you don't wish to see the actual rendering of it, you want to see the stitches, you come up here to true view and you click that and now you're looking at stitches. You're not looking at the actual texture of it. So we'll go back to true view. Here also with the object properties, um, you can change many different options as you saw here I did triple run all the way around the square for this square selected the square and now we'll go to satin and it puts a satin stitch all the way around the square this is how we begin to make patches actually so a patch has a satin stitch all the way around the outside of whatever shape patch it is that you're trying to make and that's what helps you seal off the edges of your patch. Now let's go over to the circle here and as you see the circle has a lot of different options as opposed to the outline. See the outline options are there but we want the fill options which are here. Um, you can choose different options uh, over here in this 
And this is something that I would suggest to just play with um, to get the feel of how these work over here. Here's your stitch type. Down here's your pattern. So you can change the pattern of your tatami stitches um, and you can make it look however you want here in the middle of the square. But in most instances when you're digitizing a solid field design, it's going to be your basic tatami stitch. Another way to change how this looks is you can come here to spacing and you can adjust the spacing. Now I wouldn't suggest to adjust this too terribly much starting out until you learn what your stitches do and how dense you want your stitches to be. But say for instance we change this from 16 to 20. Hit enter and it changes it just a little bit. And you can continue to play with this to see uh, exactly what it'll do and as you see that space it out a whole lot in comparison to the 0. Point, um, sorry, 0. 0.016 that it was to begin with. 0. 0.016 and then hit enter and that was right in here where I changed that. Also you can go to effects and you can have it do a gradient see how it's filled in a lot more and then it's getting um, more space up at the top. You can play with that, change that around, and then your stitching is um, what you have going on um, underneath. So whenever embroidery starts, if you've paid attention, it comes in with the little stitches, maybe zigzag or something to that effect. Then it comes back over the top and does the regular embroidery. Well, that's your underlay. So you can take underlay completely off or you can just only have one underlay up under your design. Here is your pull compensation. If you click uh, this or don't click, it'll change your pull compensation and it's not going to show with this one very much because I changed the effects of it um, and took it off of just the regular embroidery. Okay, so now let's take a look at pull compensation. Um, it's not really showing up too much with this one either, but it will kind of shrink the embroidery with the less amount of pull compensation. And pull compensation basically compensates for whenever something is embroidered on, it pulls the stitches around the of the fabric that this is embroidered on. It'll pull the stitches in and kind of give it a puckering effect. Uh, so if you don't want that puckering or if it's puckering pretty bad whenever you embroider something, you can take the pull compensation off and it'll help the design kind of relax a little bit and help eliminate pucker around your design. So let's say we want this circle to be a patch. Um, you will select it where like see here the boxes are hollow. This allows you to rotate and move your design around or you can click it and make sure these are black boxes and you can resize with a wheel com hatch from those. If we wanted this to be a patch, um, let's say yellow on the inside with a black border, we can select this here, turn, come down here, your threads should be down here. If not, you can add threads. If you come from here, look straight down, and all the way to the bottom right hand corner here are threads. You can pick and choose and add threads to your template. Um, down here you see add and remove. So you can take colors away from here. You can add colors in. These are generally supposed to be your basic colors that you use all the time. So right here this little arrow we can hide our threads. And now we want to put a black border around this. So that we could turn it into a patch. Now I'm going to click this square and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard just to get rid of it for the time being. All right, so what I'm going to do then, instead of doing an outline, I'm going to duplicate it. So, in order to put an outline around the shape, especially since I've moved it, I hit duplicate. So, we have two circles now. And I want these to be aligned perfectly. And you can tell 
there are two circles because now instead of just one over here, there's two. And for the second one, let's make sure that it's back where it was. On the second one, I'm going to turn it into an outline. So now we see the single run outline is around the shape. And we're going to change it to a satin stitch. So already we have one that's a field shape. One that's a satin stitch. Let's change the color to black to define the difference. And now we have two totally different objects uh, where we can create a patch here. So you can come back in and you can put wording here for a round patch that's made. And if you hold it along one of the corners, you'll see what the size is. It's just over four inches round square. Now, for patches, this border really needs to uh, be a good thick border with tight stitches. Uh, and I usually suggest a good bit wider than what you see here. So I come to stitch settings and I have the black border selected. As you see here, not the fill, but the satin outline is selected. Then I come to manual spacing. For patches, I generally set this on 10, and I don't know if you notice, but it's filled in quite significantly more. When we zoomed in before, you could see some space in between. Let's go back and take a look at that. So it was on, I believe, 14 or either 16, I can't remember, but even on 14, you still see some space here. You see the yellow behind it. We don't want to see anything. So I'm going to change that back to 10. And now you see that's gone. And also the width of this, this is saying that it's 0 0.079 inches from here to here. And I like a nice thick border on my patches. So we're going to change this to one. And it made it a little bigger. So we'll go undo so that you can see the difference. See how it jumped bigger than what it was and a lot thicker so we'll zoom out and that's a nice healthy patch okay so if you wanted a round patch that had some type of lettering on it then we'll come up here to lettering and we'll click on lettering again right here and then enter text we'll say hello and then hit the enter on the keyboard and then we'll say sunshine because it's yellow so now that we have this and it's selected here right here with this font is where you can change your font to uh, find one that works for you and once you come here and you select a font you can take your hand off the mouse and hit the up key on your keyboard and scroll through the different fonts that are built into will come hatch okay so i like this one and what i'm going to do the cool thing about will come hatch is you can enlarge your fonts because they're built in they're made for you to be able to adjust them however you wish and so now that i have that we can change the color down here so i have the wording selected i'll come down here and you can change it to whatever color you would like to change it to okay if you stitch it out and you don't like the jagged edges on it on your letters and how you see spacing here then again just like you did with the border you can come here to manual spacing and you can change it here to something a little thicker and as you see it filled it in really nicely so that's going to stitch out really cute and you can also change the lettering to tatami. It doesn't have to be satin. So see, we changed the type of stitching here. We'll put it back to satin because that's the way um, it was digitized to be a satin. And then it changed it. So we'll put that back to 11 to make sure it's filled in really nicely. So that's a couple of little things that you can go ahead and do and play around with and will come hatch without bringing in anything else um, to create 
any digitizing and will come happy.